How's it going? <laughs> oh man. 2012. Around May of 2012. That was when my entire career started. That was when Sonic Man was born. That was when the thoughts that I had of potentially naming someone who would initially back then was called Sonic Boy end up being Sonic Man had became a real, a reality. Just this seven foot tall giant, 300 pound giant of a man just dominating the entire roster and just really beating everyone one by one. As time sort of just moved forward though, you know, things kind of changed for him a little bit. He, normal people, they tend to grow as life goes through, right? But he actually shrunk down a few sizes. He went from seven foot one to six foot four. Around 222 pounds, I believe. So, as that was going down and everything, I just started to slowly develop confidence for myself. As I started winning WWE championships and world championships back to back, it really just grew on me how I just started having the confidence to say that I was truly the best out of everyone. You know, back then I, I would fight my friends here and there, whether it be James, um, Justin, Mace, all those people would be able to help push me to become the best. I started playing wrestling games around 2010, the summer of 2010. Uh, my, my, my good friend uh, Justin had linked me with SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. And as I was just, just looking at how the game was and just not knowing anything about it, but very just invested in the violence and everything about the game, I was, I was very into it. I would look at these characters like almost as if they were real. People like Umaga, the Great Kali, and John Cena, and Randy Orton, and Batista. All those people were like the ones that stood out to me the most, especially Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy was probably my favorite out of the bunch because of the face paint. Eventually, I would find out that this was a real thing. This is a real live show. And I'm just looking at everything like, wait, so that that giant as person, the Great Khali, that, that, that's a real person? That is an actual real person, bro? What? Um, that, that dude that, that would just sprint down the ring and then throw a shirt and hat to the crowd, that's a real person? The dude that looked like he was having a seizure on the ropes, that's, that's a real person? That is insane. And ever since then, like when I first saw WWE, I became invested with it ever since. I absolutely loved it. As WWE 13 dropped though, uh, that was when I started to take this game very, very seriously. This is WWE 13. Brand new, brand new. That was when I got really competitive and really wanted to push myself to get better and better every single day. And it got to a point to where I wanted to start doing shows. It really got to a point to where I wanted to start doing a lot of universe shows and I really wanted to start pushing storylines to, uh, I guess just for competitive sake. Because I, I really love the storyline aspect of the game and I really just like all the scenes that, that are offered in the game and I really wanted to just see what that would look like in person. My very first show was on my birthday. I called it Extreme Party. I went up against uh, I went up against Jimmy one on one and I became the WWE champion. And then eventually I had it, this is one of my more serious um, back and forth rivalries was when I fought my cousin one on one. And the contract stated that if I lost I had to delete my character. If he lost, he needed to retire. In that Money in the Bank match, all it took was one finisher to hit him with an RKO, and that was wraps. One, two, three. And I was just thinking, just looking back at it, like, man, like, it really took just one finisher to do the job. That's, that's insane. And from that point on, I just continued defending my title. I eventually would get into a tag team with Kofi Kingston 
and I ended up winning six tag team titles with him. We called ourselves Sonic Boom, and that really grew from WWE 13 over to 2K14. And um, yeah, it was quite the growing process to my character as Sonic Man. One of the main things that really defined me as the best out of the group was my ability to kick out. That's what everyone had said about me. They hated that I just could keep kicking out no matter what. Sometimes I would kick out of 10 finishers. It, it, it was such an insane, unpredictable thing to where I would be able to just kick out of moves over and over and over again. And that was what really kicked off my rivalry with Justin and among other people. And eventually, as I won enough championships, they, I guess, I guess that was around the time period where I was just declared from that group as the best. Looking back on it 10 years later, it's just, I, I think it's pretty insane, like almost how I made a superhero out of those thoughts that I had as a nine-year-old kid that would grow up as this virtual, real wrestler. I'll forever be proud of those years. WrestleMania. The granddaddy of them all. The showcase of the immortals. I think that's what they call it, right? <laughs> the most important event of the year and for me it was no different wrestlemania 2014 was probably the most important wrestlemania of my life like i would say it, it was definitely months in the making of how everything had went down into that faithful main event of that fatal four-way ladder match between myself nick storm aka kevin styles RVD and Mark Ross for the Triple Crown Championship. This this whole thing started around, let's say, September of 2013. It all started around Night of Kings. Just a few months out from when I first decided to start the shows in universe mode, and I was the main champion, the WWE champion, defeating everyone left and right, and just coming off of Summer Bass defeating Mace in a one-on-one -on -one match. At that point, I really just sat and thought to myself and looking at all my accomplishments from my career at that point, just thinking, what is there left to do? Like really, what, what was there left to do? I, I really felt like I had accomplished everything that I wanted to do. And I felt like I had reached that ceiling, you know, and you're just at the top and you're just staring down at everyone else and you just kind of want to wander off into the sunset. but. For me, I, I decided to create a new championship, a third main championship, and that being the Triple Crown Championship. With that title just being the main championship to be what would go beyond what the WWE and the World Heavyweight title would look like. At Night of Kings, I fought for the Triple Crown Championship in a six-man Armageddon Hell in a Cell match. I still to this day don't remember the, the other two people. I just remember it being myself, Justin, Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, maybe CM Punk, and, and somebody else. I, I, I just can't remember. But at the very ending of that match, it was really just a, a, a lockdown of just me, just me being inches away from pinning Rey Mysterio just to watch Justin rip that title away from me by tapping out CM Punk. And just like that, he was the very first Triple Crown Champion. And that, that really bothered me so much. And it, it bothered me so much that I was just like, I need to take a break from all this shit. Fast forward a couple months later, we get into the Royal Rumble season and I make my return at number 30. And just like that, I eliminated everyone else that was in that ring and took my spot as the victor for that year's Royal Rumble. And of course, you know, my first choice was to go after the, the Triple Crown Championship at WrestleMania. And a lot of establishment, a lot of building was going on during that time period because 
I think a month after that, RVD was WWE Champion, and Mark Ross at the time was the Triple Crown Champion. And then Nick Storm just so happened to weasel his way into my match, which is insane. So in this ladder match, it was like all the stakes were up. It was for both the WWE and the Triple Crown Championship. I remember having like butterflies in my stomach thinking like, like wow, am I, like, could I win this match? Cause at the time that was my first time me and Nick Storm, I really had that first encounter. Like we had never fought in before up to that point. So I was really nervous going into that match. I remember me and Kay were debating to see who would be the best one out of both of us. We decided to put that theory to the test. We did decide to have a fatal four match to decide who was better. And Ten minutes in, I I just I smacked the shit out of Miles with that ladder, set it up, climbed that shit, and took the Triple Crown Championship along with the WWE Championship. And from that point on, when I won that, I felt like I was king of the world. It, it was such a, such a great feeling holding two of the top titles in that company. I remember going to match confident as hell knowing that, you know, I'm the best man. But you know, the results showed. K ended up hitting me with the ladder, smacking me in the face with that thing. He ended up climbing up the ladder and won the match. I was pissed. I knew in my heart and mind that I was better, but that match proved that I wasn't. It was another moment that helped further solidify my legacy, in a sense. Because that was another thing that I was fighting for at the end of the day, to see if I, if I still had it, if I still had that drive to be the best in the world. And that night, I proved it. Me and Miles had quite the interesting to say the least kind of rivalry you know there, there was a lot of desperation going into that match that first ladder match on both our ends and when when miles saw that i was the champion he really got envious and it, it got to a point to where he was desperate to do anything he could to beat me for that triple crown championship so after that leading into a month later we get into the extreme rules pay-per-view it's a Hell in a Cell match between myself, Mark Ross, and Nick Storm. It was it was one hell of a match. It, it was a back and forth thing. I wasn't personally too worried about it because I was confident in myself that I could have pulled it off and walked out as champion. But uh, unfortunately, that wasn't exactly the case. They triple crown from Venus, Arizona. Warning at 232 pounds. Mark Ross. Nick Storm. <laughs> Me and Kay, we have had a great, great rivalry. Full of ups and downs, lefts and rights. I remember being in the hell, the hell in a cell match. It was me, Kevin Styles, yeah! versus Sonic Man, versus Mark Ross. That match was all over the place. People got thrown off the cell, thrown through the cell, getting tossed through the freaking door. It was wild, it was chaotic and panic destruction. We beat the shit out of each other in that matchup. But nearing the end, near the end of the match, Mark Ross hit me with his Omega Driver finisher and then sneaky little, sneaky little Nick Storm just comes in, swoops and throws him under, under the bus to pin me. I remember most was that you know 
Mark Gross and Sonic Man are fighting the ring. They're going at it. I got up. I knew it was my time for opportunity. I threw Mark Gross up. I took opportunity. And I pinned Sonic Man. One, two, three. I knew right then and there. It was my time to shine. And after that occurred. I was hell bent on doing whatever the fuck I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to feel from that point. I, I felt so lost just thinking like, that really just happened? I really just lost to him? Like this? Really? Like, <laughs> like, this guy's a joke. And then it dissolves from a fatal four-way to a triple threat and now down to a one-on-one. -on -one. And this one-on-one -on -one was, was very interesting because it was an I quit match for Miles' Triple Crown Championship. It was me and him going one-on-one, -on -one and anything goes in this match. And I think this was the one and only time I was involved in a I quit match for anything as far as championships goes. In this match, you know, we were both going through our redemption arcs with the last two matches, and now it was just like, who's really the best between us two specifically? Who really had it in themselves to beat the other person so bad that they just had to call it a day and just say, fuck this and quit. In that match, there was so much going on. And I think in the very start of it, I, I believe I busted him open. I speared him through the announcer's table. A lot of finishers thrown left and right. Some steel steps were involved. A lot of chairs. And man, <laughs> frustration. The frustration in Miles' face was <laughs> was very entertaining. It, it was such a developing thing. And leading near the nearing the end of the match, you know, he, he wanted me to quit so badly. He wanted me to quit so badly just so he can walk out of there as champion. And I just, I'm not a quitter. And nearing the end of the match, I DDT'd him head first on a steel chair and a delusion of miles in his brain was just like he just had to do it he said i quit and that was it chris i don't know i was incapacitated i was out of the world after that my mind was different. I quit matches, they change people. Sometimes for the better. For me, it was for the worse. I had to reflect on everything after that match happened. The fact that like he was really new to all of this and he was just trying to like figure out the things that I was doing and just he would do everything he could to try to like keep me away from that title, but I'm just a different breed to him. <laughs> And he learned that very, very fucking quickly. And from that point on, I carried that title with me as we went into the summer. So the summer of 2014, when I was when I was Triple Crown Champion, it was really more of a defining moment for me as far as my character, as far as my career going. Because it, it all kicked off at the birthday bash featuring myself going up against John Cena and Nick Harris who he was then at that point called, now not no longer Nick Storm, Nick Harris. <sighs> um, and a triple threat elimination match for my title. Going in there, I, I know Miles was desperate as hell to beat me. I know that that was just the case. You are this. Amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you're gonna... There was a point where I hit a leg drop on someone through a table. That was fucking wild, bro. Sonic oh, Man came with the leg drop through a table. He both double team John Cena. Being the little, little crap out of him. Nick Harris is like, yo, let's let's jump John Cena. Let's jump him real quick. Let's jump him. And that's what we did. We beat the fuck out of Cena. We bullied the shit out of him the entire match up until when he got eliminated.
And after that, it, it had gone down to me and him one-on-one. -on -one. I personally hit Sonic Command with a Shiny Wizard. He kicked out, you know? Then after that, Sonic Man just said, fuck it, I'ma just eliminate, you know, Kevin Styles." He hit me with the Shining Wizard of all freaking finishers, and I kicked out, like normally. And when it was down to a one-on-one -on -one via pinfall with him, I already knew who was better between the two of us at that point. So I, I had zero worry at all about him. Connor with the catching RKO. One, two, three. And after I had successfully defended my Triple Crown Championship from there, fast forward a month later, we get into the revenge. And, uh, you know, me and this revenge pay-per-view, we, we never really got along that much, you know? I was in a Fatal 4 rematch for my Triple Crown Championship. It was myself against Roman Reigns, Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar. And this was a match that I didn't really take seriously like that. And, you know, it was all fun and games up until, uh, you know, I just see Brock deliver Roman Reigns with an F5. And I'm just screaming at Goldberg, go break up the pen, go break up the pen. Didn't do shit. He didn't do anything. And it was just, you know, Brock claiming the gold. Just for uh, Jimmy to cash in and take the belt off Brock almost immediately. So there were three different champions all in one night. Everything is just crazy. We uh, we go into Summer Bash. Myself, Jimmy, and Brock Lesnar in a triple threat match for the Triple Crown Championship. And at that point, I, it was just game on. It got to a point to where a lot of people were thrown through announcer tables. And I believe I ended up winning that match by submission. From that point on, I was just kind of like looking back at everything like, okay, have this title now, I'm not gonna lose this shit ever again. Because at that point, I was still thinking of the things that had happened several months prior back in Night of Kings with the Hell in a Cell situation. So after I won my title again, my third Triple Crown Championship at that point, I had realized, okay, I know who's next. I definitely want to So, as you all have like heard me discuss earlier about the whole, about, about how Justin had introduced me to all of this, you know, wrestling and everything, and how all that works, he was also at the same time my, one of my biggest rivals. We were, in a way, we were kind of equal to each other. We would always go back and forth. Some days... He would kick out more finishers than I would, and some days I would kick out more than he would. It would always be that back and forth chemistry that we would have, you know. He he would be the most shocked out of everyone whenever I would kick out of a move. And whenever he would, whenever I would kick out, he, he used to get so mad at me and everything. Oh my goodness, like, it used to be so insane. As we were kind of just leading into the into the universe mode shows, which would, you know, then eventually be called XTV. As you guys heard about how I had that incident where I had a match in a six-man home so to not only be, to become champion, but to become the first Triple Crown champion. I remember the very ending of that match just being so mad. I, I was in the position where I was supposed to win, but because I couldn't pin him in time. Justin took advantage 
and that 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 was so insane like when that moment happened and he became champion i i got so like like triggered <laughs> and that like that that match had haunted me for quite a while i i didn't know really what to do at that point or what to say it was just it, it, it was just out of control when i came back from my break back when i was when i was champion leading into june that was when the rivalry kicked back up we had a one-on-one -on -one match inside of hell in the cell i saw versus him he was playing as batista as far as the match itself goes i don't i'm not sure i recall all that much from it i do remember people going through cells I remember people getting thrown off of cells, and one of the main things that I remember during that payback pay-per-view was that I won via submission. <laughs> and in my head, I'm thinking, was that enough? And I'm just like, no. Like, I needed to redeem myself even more. Fast forward to September of that year, I had another one-on-one -on -one match with him at Night of Kings. Look at that title. Boo! Please Boo. ignore him. Boo! Boo! We were going back and forth, reversal for reversal. And that was one of the other things that I like needed to be absolutely perfect at doing, which was reversing every single move. Because one slip up could be the thing that fucks you over. Mr. Uh, shit! Shit! Oh, dang it! As we were leading into the nearing the end of the match, we were going back and forth and reversing finishers. And I got back in the ring and I reversed his finisher just to hit him with my own. Yeah! Yes! Ah! <laughs> said that his foot was on the rope but it really wasn't he was complaining about his foot being on the rope but regardless i retained my title at that point and then going into that that infamous match at hell in a cell which was i believe my final match that i ever recorded on my xbox and the final match that i ever recorded using my my mac computer in a way it really marked an end of an era because it, things really just weren't the same after that. Just knowing the people that were in that match just brought up so much nostalgia and everything from those two years that I was in the game from that point. Myself, Jimmy, Kevin Styles, Justin, and Cesaro and Brock Lesnar for the Triple Crown Championship, for my Triple Crown Championship. Going in that match is supersonic. I was so nervous. In my head, I'm thinking, you know, let's make this match interesting, but I was like, nah. Nah, I gotta win this match, bro. Fuck all of that. And that was a really important match to me. And it's, it's still to this day probably one of my, my favorite matches of all time. No, I'm not. Airborne, you stole that from me. Like, you stole it. Chris, don't watch me. Don't watch me. Guys, help me. Ah! Help! Help! help. Thank 
Rematch. 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 No, let's do a two on two. Rematch. Justin also on the title, and that immediately gave me PTSD from when we had when we were in this exact same scenario the year previous. And as he was mere milliseconds away from submitting, killed my my best friend. You know, he busts his eye on his submission. I hit a freaking dive and leg drop. And broke up that submission. Sonic Man decided this mission. I'm gonna just take opportunity. So he decided to tap out Brock Lesnar. We all were pissed that he won the match. Because it was our goal, our destiny, to make sure that he did not win at all. His left foot broke up the submission when he was literally about to tap him out. I remember Justin being like, what? I didn't break up the pinfall? How the fuck did this shit get broken up? I didn't know what happened. All I knew was that the match was still continuing and I still had a chance to win this shit. And from that point on, it really just felt like the end of an era. We all just kind of moved on to doing our own things and I was still here, chilling as champion. Justin is definitely one of my greatest rivals. That's still definitely for certain. And I think from that point on, I was like submitted as the GOAT of the group. I was so freaking, I was so stoked to win that match. After that match, I was like, I, fuck everybody and fuck everyone. I'm champion. Suck my dick. That was probably the best match I had when I was champion. I walked out almost like a god. And after that match, I really just made history. And once again, submitted my place as the best in the world. Honestly, after that match, it really did feel like the end of an era and the start of a new one because about a month later, I went to buy myself a PlayStation 4 and I went to playing WWE 2K15. Um, I, I still held the title and I held it up into the following year's WrestleMania to where I had unfortunately lost it in a fatal four-way. What a reversal! And he's rolling. Here's a cover. Oh, look at this. Two, three. The hardcore icon win. And then I just kind of drifted off into the sunset for a little bit up until I came back. The 2015 birthday bash, extreme party in a one-on-one -on -one ladder match against good old Nick Storm or Nick Harris in a one-on-one -on -one ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship. And in that match, I absolutely destroyed him. It, it was almost like a full circle, you know? Like, uh, that was our first encounter and up to that point, that was a one-on-one uh, -on -one ladder match, you know? Um, smacked him around a little bit. It's two super kicks later. has taken so much out of this guy he's not gonna give up but man this has been physical he's got the title he's got the title mr amazing win i captured that briefcase containing that championship as far as me and justin went you know we, we would fight here and there we kind of would go back and forth but just not as often anymore you know we were kind of just doing our own thing and our very final match that we had one on one was at the Great American Bash 2016, where he was disguised as a gorilla costume of all things. You know, he, he beat the fuck out of me for like, I believe the first four to five minutes and then I started coming back. We really, you know, it got to a point where he hit me with a code breaker, I kicked out and I hit him with the suplex brain buster and pinned him one, two, three. And then at that point, that was when, just, just looking back at, at that whole rivalry, he was definitely one of my biggest rivals, you know, as far as competition went. We would always go back and forth in the ring. And in the end, in that last match, I just walked out the better person. And I still hold that title up until this very day.